Hey everybody, back with a, another digital walkthrough today. And uh, as always, we're going to be using the Cardioscape app. Remember, the Cardioscape app is available for free for Mac OS and Windows at www.learnchd.com or at www.cardio-scape.com. And I'll put those links down below in the description. Be sure to like this video and subscribe uh, if you find this helpful. But uh, let's go ahead and bring up the specimen we'll be working with today. And this one is a heart with mitral stenosis. So we'll go ahead and open and load this model up the app. And you'll see we have actually two different models um, for this. We've got one from the left side and one for the right side. So we'll go ahead and actually turn off our labels. And we'll go through the right side real quick and then revisit the left. So here's the heart from the right side. And this is kind of looking at the sideways. So head would be to the left of the screen here. Inferior or legs would be to the right of the screen here. Anterior surface is towards the top of the screen. And then the posterior surface is towards the bottom of the screen. Left hand or the left side of the body would be in towards the screen and the right would be coming out of the screen. So currently we're looking at what's a triangular broad based or pyramidal um, appendage. It's consistent with a morphologic right atrial appendage. If we look inside this atrium, we do see pectinate muscles that spill outside the confines of the, this appendage, consistent with a morphologic right atrium. And then as we look further into this atrium, we do see the oval fossa here, and it is intact. We also see the coronary sinus, which remember is one of the three boundaries of the triangle of cock. Here's the tendon of Totoro. And then here is the right-sided atrioventricular valve. These three structures, the coronary sinus, tendon of Totoro, and right-sided atrioventricular valve form the triangle of cock. And it's at the apex of this triangle that we expect to find the atrioventricular node. So in this heart, we would expect to find the AV node here. As we come to the right-sided AV junction, we do find that there is a three-leaflet atrioventricular valve one, two, and three. And we do see that this uh, valve does have direct connections to the ventricular septum here, consistent with a morphologic tricuspid valve. So this would be the anterior leaflet, septal leaflet, and then the inferior leaflet. As we look at this, uh, this ventricle that this valve leads into, we do see that it has coarse trabeculations. There is a septomarginal trabeculation, so consistent with a morphologic right ventricle. Unfortunately, we don't have the RV outflow tract showing here. Although the RV outflow tract would be behind here and then lead to the pulmonary artery and the branch pulmonary arteries. Now that we've taken a look at the right side, why don't we go ahead and take a look at this specimen from the left. And to kind of get everybody oriented now. This is kind of a parasternal short axis or the equivalent of it. There we go. And so the anterior surface or chest is up here towards the top of the screen. Posterior surface towards the bottom of the screen. Head would be over here. Legs down here. Now when we look inside of this atrium that's exposed, we find that it's smooth walled. There's no pectinate muscles spilling outside the confines of the appendage, consistent with a morphologic left atrium. Here's the oval fossa. These are the horns, the rims of the oval fossa. And you can see that the oval fossa is in fact intact. So there is no interatrial communication. Here is the orifice of the left atrial appendage. And if we look at it from the outside, here is the left atrial appendage, and all the pectinate muscles are confined within the appendage itself. 
And then when we look at the left-sided atrioventricular junction, we do find that it's guarded by a separate valve than what we've seen before. But this valve is actually markedly stenotic, and I'm sorry there's, it doesn't scan as well um, because it's darker inside that part of the heart. But here is the mitral valve. You can already tell that this valve annulus is a lot smaller than the tricuspid valves was. This slit right here is actually a cut that was made during the dissection and not um, the mitral valve orifice. Here is actually the, the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, and here's the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And actually the effective orifice of this mitral valve is actually only around here when you put these leaflets together uh, just because the posterior leaflet has actually fallen or in a little bit and isn't actually co-opted with this anterior leaflet at the moment. So a very small mitral valve annulus and a very small effective mitral valve orifice consistent with um, congenital mitral, mitral valvar stenosis. This mitral valve does um, lead into a ventricle that has fine crisscross trabeculations consistent with a morphologic left ventricle, and there is an aorta that rises normally from that left ventricle, and here's the ascending aorta coming centrally um, up out of the heart. So a heart with otherwise normal intracardiac anatomy until we get to the mitral valve, which has um, a small valve annulus as well as valvar um, stenosis. And on Thursday, we'll actually have a video of this specimen itself. So definitely take a look at this and review this video. And uh, then come back on Thursday to see the walkthrough of the actual heart specimen itself. All right, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.